Hello everyone. I'm very pleased to welcome you to the Love on the Line TV conversation. This is a very special report on an exciting event that was at the Queensland University of Technology last week, namely the Tainted Love Exploring the Reality of Romance Fraud Symposium. It was organized by Dr. Cassandra Cross and hosted by the Crime and Justice Research Center. I was privileged to be in attendance and um, I was able to display my book Love on the Line there as well. So I am very pleased about that and thankful. And this is because we need to have the stories of the romance scam survivors told and shared around the world. What I'm showing you here are the highlights of the symposium as I experienced them. It is my take on the issue of romance scams, especially about the prevention and support of the victims to enhance their or our recovery, as I myself am one of the survivors. If later you are inspired and you want to see the full um, speeches, then click on the link which will be provided. I should warn you that this um, report is not the whole story or the, all the details uh, Sharon Armstrong supplied when she was scammed to becoming a drug mule uh, through a romance scam and she was arrested in uh, Argentina and had to spend two and a half years there in a prison. You can read all about that also by clicking the links. What I heard and what I'm reporting is how I relate to who to her story of survival and recovery uh, from this incident that happened several years ago or started several years ago and it has impacted her whole life ever since and will impact nearly all of her decisions from here on. I'm very um, proud to have recorded a special um, conversation with her as well so it is in the making. Stay tuned and subscribe so that you won't miss it. It is warming to my heart to witness such compassion in this kind of events and such willingness for practical action uh, in order to resolve the issues around romance fraud. Because as we know, there is very limited sources and resources to stopping it because it is romance fraud is in rampant at the moment. And as soon as we stop the ones who are there, the new ones are popping up. But what is the most important issue and what is and has been um, addressed by this symposium is the recovery of the victims uh, so that it is the survival and the recovery and how it is handled. And that is, that is the topic that we can actually have impact on and that we can change. Sharon Armstrong's story has touched me very deeply. We met first time last year when she came to talk at the Queensland Police Headquarters at our Fraud Prevention Support Group. I did blog about her then and there is a link to it too so you can read it. Uh, this group, by the way, at the Queensland Police Headquarters, we meet every second Saturday, Sunday of the month. So if you need the group like that, please come along. Sharon's story has um, lots of similar elements to mine. She fell very fast and hard, just like me, and she's a person who have had previous work experience um, similar to situations which, she was, which was happening with her scammer. And if she would have known to look for the connection, she might have been able to apply it. But she didn't, just like me. His first message to me had me hooked like I had never been before. To cut a very long and sordid story short, I fell hard and fast. I should have recognised the grooming that was occurring. I mean, in a previous life, I had worked within corrections, and I had had many an encounter with sex offenders and opportunities to study their techniques. But no, I had my rose-coloured glasses on. With the benefit of hindsight, I now believe the scammers respond to your insecurities, your desires, and your kindness. They look for those who are trusting, compassionate, and looking either consciously or subconsciously or unconsciously for someone or something to fulfill what you feel 
will enrich your life in some way. The frosters are very clever people and can change the decades by the drop of the hat because they take this as their job. And Sharon also, particularly in the beginning of her, of her relationship, had thought that this um, relationship between her scammer and her is too good to be true, and she had told him so. Well, he came out and by saying that it's not all about the money, honey. He tells me I would be his PA, really his fiance. He says, "How funny is that?" I think now. Me, who has never held any intention of ever marrying again, was being excited by the thought of this man wanting to marry me. Sharon's story is very moving. To me, it is very incredible that a woman of her caliber would have been able to be scammed and framed like she had been. But thinking of how I felt myself and how I was duped, even though my my experience with uh, with the romance scam is very limited, brief in compared to her. I now understand much better the depth of the betrayal she went through. She did all the right things and checked all the right boxes, and um, including the company of this man who she she had she was scammed by. But she did not know that it was a fake company, and she did not know that it would be taken off from the internet very soon. Her family was her backbone, though. I remember promising them that I would cope and I would get through this, regardless of the consequences. I went through feelings of huge shame. The knowledge that my family was suffering and that I should have known better was overwhelming. Most days, I kept torturing myself as to why I hadn't seen all the signs that now seemed so obvious. Finally, I reached a point where I knew that these thoughts were not healthy. I didn't want to feel like a victim anymore. I came to realize that I would survive this and come out of the experience armed with new knowledge and understanding of how these things happened. So how did I achieve this? Family, friends, strangers' support and unconditional belief in me, prayer, humour, positive thoughts, remaining focused, routines, working within the prison, and knowing there is always someone else facing tougher challenges. Listening to Sharon's story made me deeply grateful to know that there are people who are willing to fight and to stand up for scams. The next speaker is Dr. was Dr. Cassandra Cross herself, and um, she was commenting about the romance fraud and how, how Sharon was a good example of this. I have been very impressed by her research, both the one she's done before and the one which is coming. So I've been researching this area for just over eight years now. So in a previous life, I actually worked for the Queensland Police Service, and that was where I really, that was where I first was introduced to the problem of fraud, and I guess that's where I first started talking to people like Sharon who were brave enough to come forward and share their story. So when we think about romance fraud, what exactly is it? I know I've had lots of questions from, I guess, a lot of media that I've done. How is romance fraud different to just a bad relationship? <laughs> and I think they're both bad relationships. I think many people would agree with that. So the victim is defrauded through the guise of a legitimate relationship and I think this is what's problematic because as we've heard Sharon say, she was in that relationship and while she was questioning, she, she was blinded, I guess had the blinkers on about the person and about how she felt about him and how she thought he felt about her. So there is research that says that the internet facilitates a more intense relationship, that people are more open on the internet and can develop what they perceive to be a more intimate and intense relationship online than face to face. And I think we all experience that in terms of it's a lot easier sometimes to type out feelings and to communicate um, via the internet than it is to actually say your feelings face to face to somebody. And the main finding to come out of this is the double hit of victimisation. And I can certainly say from the victims that I've spoken to in this current project that it's the loss of the relationship that's actually, I think, harder to take sometimes than the loss of the money because that's what has the significant impact on the individual. Cassandra stressed again and again that the impact of the romance fraud is far greater than just the money. 
The feeling of shame and the blaming of the victim looks to be one of the main problems of the victims not coming forward and talking and sharing their stories. The new research Cassandra is taking on will explain romance fraud from the framework of uh, domestic violence. That is certainly something that I understand and it is my experience that there is a direct link there to be found. So I am very, very excited about this in the coming research and I'm looking forward to having a special conversation with Cassandra as well in the Love and the Lion conversations. The two government officers that were in attendance and speaking at the symposium were very compassionate people and I was really happy to meet them. Delia Richards spoke about the interesting action the Australia Competition and Consumer Commission is taking. She said though that the romance fraud was number one priority for scam watch. She also um, addressed the misconception about who is targeted by the scammers. And she said that the statistics show that it's about 50-50 between men and women. Men lose a little bit money though. And she also praised uh, Cassandra's um, research, coming research, because she said it is not so uncommon to find that re- there is a previous relationship experience with the victims, with violence, either with their previous relationships or with the family they come from. So this gives them a predisposition to uh, try to be the peacemakers in the world in their relationship, and so they comply. Lastly, David Hillard talked about um, a very successful project, Sunbird, in Western Australia. And I had heard about this project quite a lot before, and I was very excited to hear what he says. Uh, Part of this was touched on by Sharon. It's about uh, that perfect business model. And that perfect business model about low inputs but big outtakes um, One of the other essential elements for this sort of criminal behaviour is that you can confuse the regulatory authorities, both in one country, in one state, or across the world. And this sort of scam is that perfect model. It falls between the cracks everywhere you look. As I said before, the earlier we intervene, the less losses people sustain, but we're not stopping it. The programs that are out there, the scammers that are operating, the criminal groups that are operating out there, are recruiting as fast as we're stopping. Um, so I guess our last message is, they're still coming and they don't stop. David finished with, it's a strange old world we are working with. And I am certain that he knows what he's talking about and has great experience in working with those people who need convincing about the fraudsters being what they are. Luckily, he also said that by sending letters to people who have been sending money off so, lots of money off so, the progress is being made. So we ended up with the positive note in all accounts. I certainly learned a lot about romance fraud and I'm able to go forward in my own way uh, to raise awareness about romance scams around the place, particularly through my books. I very much thank the speakers And I thank you for listening and watching. There will be a um, blog about it and it is all on the YouTube. So keep subscribing. There will be more to come, as I promised, a special um, conversation between Sharon Armstrong and I. So stay tuned. But most of all, have a very good day and keep fighting. Stand up the scans, as Sharon would put it. So thank you and goodbye.